ho, ho, Merry Christmas! Well, hello and welcome to today's episode of Need I Say Mer, the Christmas podcast. And today I'm delighted to welcome our guest, Dan James. Hello, Dan. Hello, Adam. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. How are you doing? I am very well, starting to get very festive, which is nice. Yes. And uh, for those of you who can't see Dan at the moment, you are dressed in a very festive mood. Do you want to describe your outfit to us? Yeah, I've gone with a a Santa jumper with... uh sort of bobble buttons which is nice and i've also put on my santa hat as well to look as festive as possible of course and you you have been saying to me that how many christmas jumpers do you own i think it's at least 15 but i may have done that count a couple of years ago and then added to it like i definitely added at least two this christmas already and i'm not recounted but that is an impressive amount so i'm getting the impression that you you're quite a big fan of christmas in fact I, i already knew that because when i first suggested this podcast idea you did ask me if you could be on every single episode. Happily. Just as a little Christmas elf in the background, yeah. I'd happily just come I, and talk about it. It's the best. Yeah, I, I do wonder, Dan, maybe what we could do is if you could say in a moment, ho, 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 Merry Christmas, and then I'll take that audio and we'll include it in the jingle at the start of each, each episode. Excellent. Should we do that? Yeah, I'm over all over it. So go ahead, Dan. Do you want to do full Santa or as Dan? Uh do one of each and, okay. and we'll see which is, which is best. So Santa, first of all, ho, 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 Merry Christmas. And then as Dan, ho, 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 Merry Christmas. There we go. We could use both. That, yeah. That's great. Yes, I love it. Top and tail it. But we've got to this point in the podcast and some people may not know who on earth is this guy who owns 15 Christmas jumpers and sounds a, suspiciously like Santa. Uh, but you're not Santa, you're Dan James. Can you quickly introduce yourself, who you are, where you are, what you do? Yeah, I am Dan James. I uh, live in Leicester with my wife and our daughter, who's seven years old. She's called Aoife. And uh, I work for Avenue Church at the moment, which is a church in sort of the central south of the city. But I'm leading a team of people who are planting a church on the council estate that we live on called Ayers Monsell. And that starts in January 2024. That's very exciting. On the cusp of a church launch. Yeah. And do you have things happening over Christmas in Ayers Monsell? Yes, we've, there's a few like social events for the estate that we're going to go and be a part of and hopefully have a stall at, but also we're going to do a carol service on the 15th of December on a Friday evening to just share a short gospel talk, sing some carols, get to know people and invite them to come along to church when it starts in January. That sounds wonderful. Yeah, I'm yeah. hearing how, how it goes. And we're praying for you for that, Dan. And maybe our listeners will join in praying for you when that launches in, in January. That'd but be great. Really, what we're here to talk about is Christmas. Mm. And there are a few questions that I'm asking every guest who comes on this uh, esteemed Christmas podcast. And so we we'll go through the questions. Question one, Dan, what is your favourite festive food item? Yeah, favourite food at the Christmas is it's going to have to be sprouts. Okay. Because, yeah, it, yeah, it, it is controversial, controversial. And, but it has to be sprouts. They have to have gravy with them. I want one just dry sprouts. Okay. So sprouts and gravy is is the key. But I don't eat them any other time of year, and so therefore I really enjoy them. And I do genuinely enjoy them at Christmas. I like the flavour. I, I just think they're, yeah, they make me feel Christmassy when I eat them because they're so distinctly only eaten within like a one-week block of the year. Yeah, that is true, isn't it? There are certain foods that you only eat them at a certain times, so they, they add to that festive flavour. Has that been a, a lifelong love of sprouts, or did that happen later in, in your life? I think I would, as a kid, always fight them. And my mum would always insist we had to have one, or to always try one. Uh, and then gradually I grew to really like them. And yeah, just a, the, just a rich flavour. And it's the sort of thing where even like at Nando's last year, they did um, a kind of sprouts thing. I don't want to quite, like roasted sprout, it's like a kind of salad thing. It was really odd. But at Christmas, they did that. If it's there this year, I mean, it's worth trying just to say you've tried it. That's that. I, there was no gravy with that, which is the disappointment. Okay. It really is the sprouts and gravy. You want to throw some chestnuts in, do it. Throw some bacon in. Yeah, whatever. Just get, just get me the sprouts and gravy. Yeah. I was going to say, if, if have you tried it with bacon? Because that's that, that's a good thing we discovered a few years ago. Sprouts and bacon go well together. They do. But then I, I genuinely think most things sprouts would go well with, if you like sprouts. But I appreciate that is a very Marmite choice. Yeah. I, I do think we may get quite a lot of correspondence during this month about sprouts or not. Mm. Uh, and we, we do welcome correspondence. I'll add that in, uh, and maybe we can add some correspondence to later episodes. But that's your first question. Second question, Dan, 
what is your favourite non-religious Christmas song? Also, you talk a lot about carols as pastors. Uh, yeah. Your favourite non-religious Christmas song. Uh, that kind of adapts and changes with a few consistents. Uh, so uh, we have a, a, I made a compilation years ago of a CD of Christmas songs that Jamie and I, my wife, we really like. And so we play that every year, basically throughout December. Um, so top of that list for me is the song It Feels Like Christmas from the film A Muppet Christmas Carol. It's the one where the ghost of Christmas presents sings and they bounce around and that. It's got five key changes in it. And it's just, the mo- I've loved that since I was about seven or eight. I love that song. Um, but I have, I've very recently, maybe the last three or four years, uh, maybe longer, grown to love Kelly Clarkson's Underneath the Tree. It, it is a good song. It's a real banger. Yeah. I, I do like the classics. Like I love you know, your Live Aid for all that and the Pogues. They're all good songs. But in terms of ones I really want to bounce around to and have fun with, they're the ones that stick out and I could sing along every word to. When do you start listening to Christmas music normally? Or do you do you just listen to it through the year? No, uh, December the 1st. Okay. We okay. we put our decorations up and listen to the mixtape, uh, and then that plays throughout December, pretty much exclusively. Well, yeah, that's that's a good thing to have. And you, you did mention something interesting there because when I was planning this podcast, someone did suggest that I should ask every guest what their favorite Christmas film is. But I didn't want to do that because some people might give the wrong answer. But <laughs> Dan, I know that you will give the correct answer that you've already alluded to uh, of the best Christmas film. Can you tell us a bit about why you love Muppet Christmas Carol so much and how many times you've seen it? Oh, I don't think I could tell you how many times I've seen it. Uh, I Yeah, I love it. I think I love the story, A Christmas Carol. Anyway, I think it's a fantastic short story. I think Dickens, I'm, I confess, I've never read any other Dickens, but I absolutely love A Christmas Carol. I love, I read it every year. Um, with some friends a few years ago for two years in a row, we we would read it out loud together over the course of an evening and some mulled wine and mince pies. Um, that was a were, very nice thing. Were you shocked the first time you read it and discovered that the Muppets weren't originally in it? Yeah, yeah, that was slightly sad to not have Gonzo or Rizzo. Mm. Um, but in my head when I read it, I do picture Kermit as Bob Patrick. <laughs> um, and when I do the voices for my daughter, if I read it to her, it's always an ever so slight Michael Caine impression. I'm trying yeah. to rein in. Um, no, I think it's magnificent. I think Michael Caine's emotion in it is brilliant. You've got the beautiful song where Belle breaks up with him that was taken out and is now back in, if you watch it on Disney+. Plus. Um, it's just it's heartbreaking when like, Michael Caine's duetting with his younger self about the heartbreak. And uh, that really moved me as a child, and I loved that. But you can't you can't not like Gonzo telling the story and all the, the humour and the silliness and the fact that the film is so faithful to the original book. Like, it's so tight. Um, I, th- I think it's great. So the amount of times I've watched it, um, yeah, I, I probably couldn't think. So I'm turning 40 next year. Uh, that's a lot of Christmases. I must be nearing 100 views of it in total. Um, <laughs> and also I would use it as a good like social event with our house. I would invite people around to watch it and we'd have like loads of mulled wine and mince pies. And you've been in our front room. It's a decent size. We used to get like 30 people in our front yeah. room crammed watching them up at Christmas Carol once a year and that's been stopped because of COVID and hopefully going to restart this year there we go, that's that's exciting uh, so that's an, an open invite to Dan's house to watch yeah, feel free, yeah. if you want to find the date just get in touch that'll be good, yeah, no, it is a great film and uh, I the thing I think about is that um, I I, th- I think it's Michael Caine's best performance in any film, Yeah, and, and when you step back from it and think about the fact that he is he is acting with people who are literally Muppets. Yeah. He does such a good performance. It's amazing. It is a very rewatchable film. We watch it at least once every year, but we haven't got up to 100 yet, but we'll we'll keep going. It's worth doing. And I learned apparently he refused to see the Muppets when he wasn't on screen. He wanted to treat them like they were other actors, so he refused really? to engage with them at all. Yeah, it's magnificent. There we go. Yeah, it is a good film. Uh, which leads me to the next question uh, that I'm asking every guest. What is your least favourite Christmas decoration. You mentioned putting up the the decorations with your Christmas soundtrack. What's the thing you either least like to put up or don't put up because you hate it so much? Um, I've got two options here. So okay. one is Elf on the Shelf. We just don't, don't do it. I don't, I don't get it. I, it just It's too American, first of all. And I'm not one of these anti-American people, but I just... It, I just don't. We've never got it. We don't. Uh, am I allowed to talk about the S word, like Santa, on this podcast? Oh, yeah, yeah you, you can do, yes. But okay, like- so the, this may need editing out if children are listening. Um, we don't do Santa in our house. Our daughter knows he isn't real. 
Um, but we still pretend and like act like we, we know. And she does. She knows very well not to tell anybody. So we know he's not real. And just as well. And I dress up as him as well. Yeah. Um, I have got a detachable beard for for one of my Santa hats somewhere as well, <laughs> which to make this even more white. Um, so yeah, we don't do that. It's, but a lot of our friends do it. And it just feels like an excuse to bully your kid to be nice for a few weeks. And uh, thankfully, our child seems quite nice most of the time. So that seems all right. But I also. I'm a big fan of ugly, like like garish decorations. So what I don't like are any two, any tree that tries too hard to be pretty. Um, so I try and get every year uh, the ugliest decoration that I can find in early December to give to our tree. And Jamie, so the other year I got like some glitter encrusted pizza slices. Um, <laughs> they are disgusting, but I love them. Um, and then we were out to see our neighbor when they just moved in last Christmas and their, their tree looked beautiful. And I was laughing, talking about how I enjoy ugly decorations. And so I bought them this disgusting decoration of this cat sat in a wine glass drinking olives with a Christmas hat on. It was really weird, but I bought that and found it for them and made them put it on their tree. But Yeah, that sounds wonderful. Yeah. Yes. No, look, you need to send me a picture of your tree when it's okay. decorated. Um, definitely. Love Decem- it. December the 1st, it will be up. So I will send it over then. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that, that'll be great. And uh, final question uh obviously as pastors we know at the heart of christmas is the birth of jesus and the story of the nativity and i wonder who your favorite person in the nativity account is not including jesus i was going to say please i, I thought everyone's going to say jesus right that's the default yeah. um and also putting aside if any of you know anything to do with spanish christmases there is a guy in the spanish nativity scene in the background having a poo i find that really funny um google that later on uh in the in the real actual nativity it's a toss-up for me between mary and joseph because i love i love mary's like so when mary's chatting with the angel in luke one Mm -hmm. and she like she asks understandably a couple of questions Uh, it's like what what's what's going to happen and then just goes may your will be for me as 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 it fulfilled yeah just fine i trust god i'll do whatever knowing what that's going to mean for her and like all the gossip that's going to follow her the rest of her life. She's like, fine, God, if that's what you call me to do. And so to have that come to fruition when he's born, it's just a beautiful thing. So I think her faith and example of just humble trusting God is brilliant. And I love seeing that in the nativity, but then also like Joseph, like to, to be told th- this <laughs> story, I wouldn't believe it if my wife said it to me. And yet he hears it from God and he gets an angel in a dream and, uh, you know, accepts it and believes it and then acts. He doesn't just believe it, but he's hostile and grumpy about it. Like I think I would be. He just wholeheartedly em- embraces this woman and her child into his family, takes all the shame that he's going to have from that as well for the sake of obeying God. I think that's some beautiful examples of what faith looks like. And I love that. Yeah, no, they are both wonderful examples of faithful obedience and, and trusting God when you get some unexpected news uh, yeah. that's quite costly in terms of what it what it means for you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, Dan. Thank you for having me. For today's podcast. It'll be great to have you. And we hope you have a very happy Christmas. Nadolik Slau and Avloid is never there. Since this episode was recorded, Dan has sent a message to confirm that he has 14 Christmas jumpers, four Christmas t-shirts, and two Christmas shirts, as well as lots of festive pyjamas. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas!